Today we're going to talk about the dangers of idolizing entertainers by looking into what motivates people like Sam Smith, how TV broadcasts like the Grammys rarely reflect the average person, and why that's encouraging. Also, the buzz surrounding the new Harry Potter video game, Hogwarts Legacy. You're watching Jake's Takeaway. I'm your host, Jake Critcher. Welcome back to Jake's Takeaways. I'm your host, Jake Critcher. You may notice the title of this show uh, sounds a little bit different than last time. Well, it turns out Jake's Takes has uh, been taken by probably a hundred people. So I decided since uh, we're not too attached to the name yet that I would change it now rather than later. So today it's Jake's Takeaway, and I'm pretty sure it's sticking. Fingers crossed. No, really, it's going to stick. Jake's Takes was saturated. Jake's Takeaway. We're good. We're good with that. So first up, we're going to talk about Sam Smith and and the controversy around that. Well, as you may know, he he did a performance at the Grammys with Kim Petras, formerly known as Tim Petras, um, and they had quite quite the show to put on. Um, it, it, though it may have been a predictable Grammy performance this year with a song that seems to make light of a husband committing adultery at a strip club. Not only this, but the visual spectacle included Smith dressed as a weird Satan with fire, women in cages, and people worshipping him. This all has been done before, though maybe not in this exact way. The reason it's not all this shocking is depravity only has one destination, and it's already been so beat to death that it's honestly just unimaginative and boring at this point. They just want the outrage from those who have higher ideals than they have. That's something to remember. Their ideals, generally speaking, well, they suck. When you don't have purpose in life and there's no high bar from, say, God, if you're a Christian like me or any other re religion for that matter, who is anyone to tell you that any of this stuff is wrong? Why shouldn't you dress as Satan and have people act out worship to you? It's worth pointing out that when a person has reached that the point of Sam Smith, that person often ends up vaguely imitating and twisting religion for kicks while also visually admitting, in this case, depicting themselves as Satan, that their lifestyle is steeped and marinated in pure evil selfishness. The interesting thing about the arts is that people do it for affirmation and connection. It's not neutral. It's always saying something to some type of person. Myself, for example, when I share something in person that I've created... Uh, my first instinct is not to be anywhere near the person I shared it with. I'm going to be completely out of the room. Like this show. Anyone who creates craves the affirmation. We want to be told that whatever we created is legitimate. At the same time, we fear being told it's absolute crap. Thus, my instinct to be absent while people critique my show. So if it sucks, I at least won't be there in the initial moment that they've realized it. For Sam Smith, Hollywood or wherever in the big cities, he's surrounded and is catering to one mindset. Like any other creator, he's both criticized and applauded. But as evidenced by this performance, he takes the criticism and just continues to harden and attack the opposite mindset he knows less about. He's run out of ideas and has already reached the only end result, which is utter depravity. But instead of taking responsibility for his actions, he blames and mocks the moralistic and religious, because that's easier than accepting that he's become a terrible human being. He at least pretends to get a kick out of it, too. I'm willing to bet, though, that he's utterly miserable. He doesn't want to be better. He wants everyone else to drop their standards like he did. Here's some good news, though. You may look at these people on the screen giving this absolute freak show a standing ovation. Yes, they really did give it a standing ovation. And wonder how this could be happening. How are people cheering and standing for such a performance? There's a simple explanation for this. You might not know this, but the Grammy event is very exclusive. In fact, only participants and specifically invited friends of NARAS, which is the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences, can attend. And even those may have to pay $200 a ticket. My point is, the people cheering this stuff on are already part of that mindset, and are there for the sole purpose of filling the room with applause. To make it appear as if the general public can do nothing but love this kind of performance. To us, it's just a bunch of wealthy people who are arguably the least in touch with the common man who want nothing more than to promote this stuff to continue being wealthy. 
to Sam Smith, it's a room full of people telling him he's a good person while he degrades himself and everyone around him. <laughs> you may be asking yourself, why am I talking about people dressing as Satan and depravity in Hollywood and, and all that when, when Valentine's Day just passed this, this past Tuesday? Well, it kind of goes in the theme of uh, self-love. I've been very hesitant to um, go along the lines of any real self-help stuff, uh, generally because um, the main stigma and the main objection, I feel, is that it basically cultivates selfishness and that the more you focus on yourself, the more or the less, rather, that you're going to think about others. And I, I do think that's true in its worst cases. Um, and I think Sam Smith ultimately here is the ultimate end result of just caring nothing about anything else except what you want in the moment. And this might be a newsflash to you, but not everything you want is good. Sometimes you have to do challenging things against your own will for the better good, or for your good even. That kind of brings me to the point of how can you self best self-love? Well, I guess the answer to that would be the best way to love yourself is to love others. Yes, we all know the the tired saying, love others as yourself. And you can't love others if you don't love yourself. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's my argument. The more you love others, the more you do for others, the more you will love yourself because you're a good person. You're being a good person to other people. So in that way, it goes hand in hand. If you want to love yourself, you have to focus on something other than yourself. If you're sitting in a room by yourself all the time, wondering what you could do for yourself, often it just ends up being sleeping in, and I've been there, trust me. Sleeping in, doing nothing, you think you have all this time in the world just being by yourself, but in reality, you don't want to do anything by yourself. Even the most introverted people need a little bit of time with people and affirmation from somebody. So you got to go out there and you got to do good for people. Moving on to something different. Hogwarts Legacy is transphobic. Easily the most talked about video game right now is Hogwarts Legacy. From what I can tell, people love it and it looks like a lot of fun. In fact, I'll probably end up opening, owning it myself at some point. However, among all that unbridled joy and delight, there are those who refuse to say they disavow the Harry Potter books and instead want to take a colossal dump on anything new that relates to Harry Potter because they hate J.K. Rowling, the author who wrote those books that, again, they love and adore. Leading up to the release, these people were calling for a boycott of the game so as not to make money for Rowling, I guess? So with their big glasses, Gryffindor socks and complete box sets of the books, they want you to stop funding the person who made it all happen just because she doesn't want to buy into the idea that people can just decide they're the other gender. To call her transphobic or anyone else is silly considering the fact that she never said she was afraid of them, which is the actual definition of a phobia, or that she even disliked people who call themselves trans, simply that she doesn't agree with it. If we didn't buy things from people who do or say one little thing we don't like, nothing would be purchased. The economy would come to a screeching halt and society would collapse. Rowling had also been a known lefty, but this one issue has caused her to be banished and sentenced to the title of far right, much like Joe Rogan, who at the very most is center. This is all especially hilarious considering there is a literal trans character in the game. Yes, there's a trans bartender in Hogwarts Legacy. But, uh... Did they know that? Probably not. Did they do any research? Probably not. Did they Do they even really know who made this game? Probably not. How involved with the game is J.K. Rowling? I don't know. They probably don't either if they didn't know there was a trans character in it. It's just utterly hilarious that you do one thing wrong. You do one thing wrong in their eyes, and you're, you're banished out of their, their circle forever, for life. Everything you create ever is now, like, of the devil. Except the stuff that they already love, because they refuse to let go of that while they type on their iPhones and say, Capitalism, meh. Honestly, I was a little bit impressed with the representation of the trans person in the game. He has kind of a masculine-looking face and has a, clearly a man's voice, even though he has the appearance of a woman everywhere else but the face. Uh, it was a more accurate representation, so I gotta give him that. 
Now, do I care that the representation is there? I mean, not really. But I suppose there's people like that out there, so it's just maybe realistic to have like one character in this in this game. So I'm not going to gripe too much about that, but at least it, I'm more than anything I'm just happy it's an accurate representation because normally what they do is they they'll tell you, "Oh, this bartender, he's he's trans." Well, they'll say she's trans. And uh and then she'll have like a rock and bod with a beautiful face and, you know, with or without makeup, they look exactly like a woman in the game and they're like, "Oh yeah, it, that that's a trans woman." And it's just so unbelievable. I mean, even in real life with like millions of dollars put into surgery, you you look with a pile of makeup, you might look like a woman at first glance, but the game's just like totally misrepresent it and make it unrealistic. And I can see how the ideal becomes easy to follow when, when your representation is these video games that just can make them look however they want with, I mean, you just stick anyone's head on the bodies. I mean, they reuse these parts in these video games. So like, it's really not hard to do, and it's unfortunately very unrealistic. So, they made it realistic. I was surprised. I was very surprised. And it was voiced by a man. So, I mean, I guess good on them for that. On the reverse side of that, rather than boycotting the game because there's one single trans person in the game, I'm probably going to buy it anyway, and I'm going to enjoy it. And they'll hate that I enjoy it, probably. All right, folks, Valentine's Day has passed. I hope you did something for your gal or your or your man or or no one. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> do the little things. They appreciate it, especially if they're like my wife. You want to get a little something. If you do nothing, even if they say they don't want anything, you got to do something. You can't do nothing on Valentine's Day, especially Valentine's Day. I mean, really, you should do it every day but especially Valentine's Day and holidays. Um, So if you haven't done that, it's never too late. I mean, preferably on time, but better late than never, right? Before I release you to the wild, remember to take care of yourself. Love some people. You'll like yourself better for it. If you like what you watched and what you heard, if you're listening to the audio podcast, please like, subscribe, or if you're on Rumble, give me that old right hook. Put me in the Rumble. Uh, Give me a review. Share me with your friends. It will help me a lot. Um, And... Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure you get a notification when the next episode comes up every Friday, 3.30 p.m., right before you get back from work. So I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching Jake's Takeaway. I'm your host, Jake Critcher.